Hello and welcome. This is Faceless Opinion, and you know what, let's just skip the intro and get straight into this. A few days ago, Variant Comics released a video called Sentry vs. Vegeta, Battle of Titans. It was basically a video talking about who would end up winning a fight, and the verdict was that Sentry was the winner. Personally, I don't care that Sentry won. That is not the issue. People are entitled to their opinions, and that is fine. For me, the problem is how they did the analysis of Vegeta's power. The number of things that they got wrong or just omitted bothers me. I'm no power scaler, but I know it when something is not discussed properly. Now I'm not going to talk about the entire video, mainly since a good chunk of it is either A. Irrelevant to the topic at hand, such as the history of the combatants or their sponsorship deals, or B. Lack of knowledge, so I'm not going to talk about the stuff pertaining to Sentry, since I don't know much about him and can't give a proper discussion regarding him. I'm only going to be talking about the power analysis about Vegeta and their reasoning for the verdict. He has immense strength, being able to lift 145,000 tons, and is also incredibly fast, easily moving faster than the speed of sound, and can surpass the speed of light as he has been shown to dodge key beams, which have previously been clocked at moving beyond light speed. I want to know where you got that number from for Vegeta's strength. Was that something that you calculated, or was that something you looked up online? And was it in context too, because when you're pulling out actual numbers, I want to know what's in conjunction with, so that I know what it is we are talking about. And that is coming off as vague, which makes it to where I can't truly gauge if Vegeta is stronger than that or not. While for the speed stuff, Dragon Ball characters are, for the most part, in the light speed category, bare minimum, with many of the high tier people in the FTL range to even faster than that. The fact that you brought up Vegeta being faster than the speed of sound is... odd. Like, it's not wrong, but kind of a weird statement to make. It would be like me saying that the Flash is faster than the speed of sound. Well, that is obvious, the Flash is literally fast enough to travel through time. It would be ridiculous if he couldn't. Honestly, they're lobong Vegeta here, and that is how it's coming across. Blows from extremely powerful enemies like Super Buu, Super 17, Omega Shenron, and more. He it would be at this moment where any credibility that he might have gets thrown out the window. Why are you mentioning GT villains? Dragon Ball GT is non-canon, and all of the characters from there are significantly weaker than the ones in Dragon Ball Super, meaning that Vegeta's encounters with the likes of Golden Frieza, Jiren, and Broly, just to name a few from Super, would be more impressive to talk about compared to the likes of Super 17 and Omega Shenron from GT. He also has the ability to teleport, has incredible superhuman stamina. I may be in the minority for this one, but personally, I would not consider instant transmission as a part of Vegeta's list of abilities. Granted, he did learn how to do it while he was doing his Yardratian training during the Moro arc, and did use it to travel back to Earth since he needed to get back there post haste. But he only did it the one time, and I believe he even stated that I will probably never use that technique again. Though, maybe he does end up using it later. I haven't kept up with the manga lately, so I don't know if he has actually used it again or not. If you, the viewer, want to say that instant transmission should be a part of his arsenal, that's fine with me. I won't argue it. Though, I have to point out, that is not a picture of Vegeta you're using. That is Vegito. Vegeta possesses numerous more abilities and techniques to battle his enemies, such as his fireball, mouth blast, energy rings, dirty fireworks, amazing impact, genocide breaker, and final flash. I don't really remember Vegeta shooting ki blast from his mouth. Not saying that he can't, it's certainly possible he can, I just don't remember him actually doing it. But that's not the point. While listing out all of Vegeta's skills, he kind of forgot a few like his Gallic Gun, which I would say is one of his big three moves alongside the Final Flash and Big Bang Attack. Final Explosion wasn't mentioned either, though the fact that Force Spirit Fission wasn't mentioned is a massive oversight, but not the biggest one, but we'll get there when we get there. Are we there yet? We get there when we get there! Now, what is Force Spirit Fission? It is an advanced spirit control technique that Vegeta learned while doing his Yardradian training. It allows the user to separate and manipulate energy from their target, usually by making physical contact with an opponent, i.e. punching them really hard, granting the user the ability to do things such as undo fusions, absorption techniques, and free trap souls. 
With this ability, Vegeta was able to counteract Moro's energy absorption as well as give Goku energy that he gathered from the other Z fighters. You may be thinking, wow, that is a very powerful ability that Vegeta has. It is. I'm curious to know how come it didn't get brought up in the video. Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan Evolved, simply known as Blue Evolved, is his most powerful form yet, at least at the time of shooting this, since it feels like Goku and Vegeta are getting power upgrades like every other day. Now we are at the transformation section, and he mainly talks about Super Saiyan Blue Evolved. He kind of skips over the other transformations, but whatever, I'm not going to go through that much of a stink. When it comes to versus battles, the big focus when it comes to transformations should be the strongest one that they have. However, there's one small problem. Blue Evolved is not Vegeta's strongest form. Ultra Ego is, something that the comment section made abundantly clear about. Hell, I even knew about Ultra Ego, and I have not kept up with the manga whatsoever. Now, what is Ultra Ego? It is a new form that was introduced during the Granola arc, and it allows the user to channel the power of a god of destruction. While in this state, there's a significant boost in power and can become even stronger the more damage that is taken over the course of a battle. Think of Ultra Ego as the antithesis of Ultra Instinct, and Vegeta in this state is comparable to Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku, with some people even saying that he's even stronger than Goku, which remains to be certain on that one. I am absolutely baffled as to why this guy did not bring up Ultra Ego. You can make the argument that he isn't following the manga and is only focusing on the anime, and that could be a valid point. It would also explain why I didn't mention for Spirit Fission, but he even says in the discussion while talking about Blue Evolved that in the manga, Jiren said Vegeta was on par with Ultra Instinct Goku. He mentions the manga as well as saying that both Goku and Vegeta constantly getting power upgrades. So, what's the deal? One thing that I noticed while watching this video particularly during my second viewing of it, yes, I watched it twice, was that he did not really talk about any of Vegeta's feats. Like during the Sentry section, he talked about how he ripped Ares in half, or how he contended with the Hulk and Thor, or how he broke Asgard and ripped Carnage in half. While for Vegeta, all he mentions for him was how he took some attacks from Boo and destroyed Android 19 with a big bang attack. Like, talk about one-sidedness, you'll gush about Sentry but hardly talk about what the Prince has accomplished. Like, talk about the battles he's had with the likes of Golden Frieza, Jiren, and Broly. Or how he defeated Topo, who was basically a destroyer god during the T.O.P. Or when he literally broke the hyperbolic time chamber, which is a separate dimension. Or how in early DBZ, he has been shown destroying a planet. There are so many other feats I can bring up, but you get my point. None of this was acknowledged. If he could, what really gives Sentry the edge is he's basically immortal. If Vegeta were able to severely injure Sentry or even kill him, it simply wouldn't last. Now for the verdict. So you're saying Sentry wins is because he is, and I quote, basically immortal? That is a no limits fallacy. Just because someone is immortal doesn't make them unbeatable. By that logic, Vegeta would not be able to defeat the likes of Wolverine or Deadpool since their healing factors basically make them immortal, even though his stats dwarf theirs by comparison. Do you know how absurd that is? Being immortal and being powerful don't correlate with one another. Besides, Vegeta has dealt with people who you could argue as basically immortal, such as Cell, who can regenerate on a cellular level, or Boo, who is just as comparable, if not even greater. How about Zamasu, who was actually immortal? Besides, I'm pretty sure if I look it up, I could find someone who has actually killed Sentry. I'm not going to, but I'm sure someone out there has done it. When it comes to the verdict itself, I don't disagree with Sentry winning. From what was said about him, he seems quite OP, but I don't agree either because Vegeta did not get a fair shake. Ultra Ego can swing the fight. Who do I think would win? To me, it doesn't matter. I don't even care about this matchup to begin with. That may seem odd, but don't forget, for me, the issue was never the verdict. It was everything else leading up to it. I am going to be frank, this was not a good video. It makes me wonder if this was an old video that was meant to be released at an earlier point, but got delayed because I don't understand how you can omit such important information, such as Ultra Ego and Force Spirit Vision. If it's not an old video, then whoever did the research for it did a sloppy job on it.
I am going to link the original video in the description in case you want to watch it for yourself. All I ask is that you don't start spamming and causing trouble. As much as I don't like the video, I do like Varian Comics and some of the content they produce, mainly their history of videos. I find them very interesting. So, I think I'll wrap it up here. Now tell me, what are your thoughts on the original video? Was there anything that I forgot that brought up in my video that should have been addressed? Who would win in a fight between Sentry and Vegeta? Tell me in the comment section down below. This is not my normal content, so don't expect me to make this a reoccurring thing. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. Until next time, I will catch you all on the flip side.